social media is extremely important when you're in the recruitment process, uh, particularly because some recruiters will actually look you up online to see what your online presence is like. Um, we don't add Accenture, but it's definitely something that you need to take into consideration. Um, if you do have, um, like most people, personal social media accounts um, that you don't want your interviewer to see, make sure that they are set to private or that your handles are different. So use a different email address for your personal and professional social media accounts. It's also really important to Google yourself. Um, if you can, use someone else's laptop so that your passwords aren't automatically saved and just see what other people can see when they look you up. I think it's really important to think of social media as that first impression. A number of companies will be out there researching um, on social media about candidates. Um, so it's important if you are posting content that you are thinking of it as my first impression and making sure that you don't have any questionable photos uh, on social media, that your settings are set to private. Um, and that you, what you can do is actually look on Google, search on Google and see what comes up from your personal brand. Um. Social media, interesting. Um, one of the, my tips in social media is to, one, you need to be on it because that's where your the potential employers are as well. But in terms of the do's and don'ts, uh, do have social media pages, so whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn, so we, we do go looking to see if you're on social media. But in terms of the don'ts, a Facebook page, make sure it's locked. I don't want to be able to see all your pictures and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really important because the image of who you are, once you start working for Deloitte, it's, it's who Deloitte is as well. So it's really important that we can't see anything that we shouldn't see. So my recommendation is keep your pages locked and so only your friends can see what's on them. Do use the company's social media for research. It's a really good way to see what they're up to at the moment, their current direction and their culture as well. I would also say do utilise the message function. So if you want to clarify something about the program or the role that you're going for or the company's culture, do get in touch. Um, it's, it's why we have our um, social media platforms. But in saying that, don't be too casual because um, the people who are um, uh, managing those accounts. So at Main Freight, uh, I manage this, the Discover Main Freight page. So if you um, put your best foot forward in those messaging um, uh, areas, I will take notice. Um, or conversely, if you uh, may be a little bit too casual, I will also take notice um, for that too. So LinkedIn is a great tool. Uh, as a recruiter, I use it daily. It's a platform connecting professionals and that's how you want to be portrayed. So my tips would be to complete your profile as comprehensively as, as, as possible. It is pretty much a, an online version of your CV. So ensure again that you're including all relevant educational um, history, work experiences, any achievements, um, sporting interests, interests, uh, as well as, uh, again, any voluntary or extracurricular activities. Connecting with like-minded people is also really important. So connecting with individuals who have the same interests, who work in the same industry, and also maybe uh, connecting or joining LinkedIn groups. These are a fantastic um, platform where people will share relevant um, industry trends, so it's a great way for you to stay abreast of what's happening in your industry. So LinkedIn is a, a great tool to use, even at a graduate level. Um, it's basically your online CV. So there's also sections where you can get people to endorse your skills. Um, you can ask for references if you've completed an internship, add them in there as well. Um, and just make sure that you don't abbreviate any skills that you list on there. Because recruiters sometimes will actually search for a particular skill and a location, and if you've abbreviated, they won't be able to find you. It's a great networking platform. Uh, we use it on a daily basis um, at Fish and Puckle Healthcare uh, for searches as well as building our networks. So um, it's important to get a professional photo. You don't have to get a, a, a professional photography photo, but make sure it's professional in the way that uh, you look and your surroundings. We've definitely had some interesting ones um, uh, along the years, ones with Christmas trees or, or people's personal pets. Um, that type of photo 
photo would be seen, say, on a Facebook profile. Um, so more of that social network rather than a professional networking site. Um, other things that you can be getting from LinkedIn uh, is treat it as a, a networking um, platform. So when you are meeting new people out at events, um, at university, at work, uh, you can connect with them um, and keep that connection person, um, personal. Uh, so sending them rather than just a, a link invitation, you can actually tailor it and say, look, I really enjoyed meeting with you at this event, or if you haven't met them with them before, uh, maybe, hey, look, I'm really interested in connecting with you. Um, to get the most from LinkedIn, I think it's really important to be active on there as much as you can. Um, so try and get on there at least once a day. Um, keep in contact with um, old connections, make new connections along the way. Um, it's really important to not kind of spam your LinkedIn with, you know, a, it to be a replica replication of your Facebook. Um, you want it to be, it is a professional network, you want it to be professional connections that you can make. Um, one of the things that I personally do is I don't accept any requests that A, I don't know, or B, aren't relevant to my role or my industry. And so I think that's a really good thing to keep in mind. With LinkedIn, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, like most things in life. And it really is limitless as to the time you can spend on there and what you can achieve from, from doing that. So grow your network. Ask people who you have met in real life to connect with you. From that, you will um, have access to more information in your feed. Um, you'll probably see more useful content or companies you hadn't considered before in that industry that you want to explore. You can join groups, so EY has a LinkedIn group, for instance, so you can keep up to date with what's going on with us. We'll provide you with advice or access to events, so really get involved with that side of things as well. And finally, I'd advise that you contribute as much as possible to that community, because it is a community. People are all there to learn, grow, develop professionally, and they're not looking for you to be a silent observer. They want you to contribute to the dialogue, so get stuck in, but be professional. Uh, with building your LinkedIn profile, um, it's really important when you are filling out uh, your profile to think of it as a CV. Uh, so keeping the format quite similar to a CV, um, making sure that you're using all the keywords. So the LinkedIn uh, search algorithm is based on keywords, so making sure that that's relevant to your skills and your experience. Um, also, if you are liking content or posting content to, to keep it professional and to also think of it as your first impression. So the important thing to remember with LinkedIn is that employers will search for you. So even if you aren't employed, you can say graduate seeking opportunity and that'll absolutely help you stand out when they're doing searches. Uh, make sure that you get endorsements. Um, if you are part of an organisation or a society on campus, you can add them there as well, um, as well, as, well as charity organisations and, and any certifications that you have. In terms of getting the most out of LinkedIn, when you reach out to connect with somebody, send a personal note. So I have people reach out to me all the time due to the nature of my role at Deloitte. But if somebody can say, hey, I met you at an event last week, or um, I heard you speak, or whatever. So, you know, sometimes you go to these events and there's, there's you know, 100 people there. So, and I'm terrible with names. So, um, I'm, I'm good with faces. So, yes, yeah, so if your photo's on your LinkedIn page, that helps. But, you know, reach out and say, why you want to make contact with me? that actually has so much more uh, gravitas than just sending a connection. Um, and I, I believe in, in terms of business networking, uh, that's a great way to kind of build those networks. One of the things that we really value at KPMG is how you um, present yourself and how you write potentially blog posts or any posts on LinkedIn. Um, even if you, the, the thought of you know, writing something that will be then so public, um, it shows real initiative from us and it shows that you have understood the platform and you've got an opinion on an important subject that's been raised in the week. Um, so don't be afraid to put, you know, put a blog out there. Don't be afraid to write your opinion, um, as long as it obviously isn't going to offend or, or upset anybody. Again, you get back what you put in. So always be mindful that the more time you spend on there, the more time you invest, the better your profile is going to be on your network. And you might not know immediately how that will pay off, but in the future I can guarantee that something will come through from that, whether it's a future client or a recruiter who gets in touch with you or an important contact or you see an event that you want to go to. The more time you spend on there, the more things that are going to come your way, which is something I really like about it.
I think as well, it's something that people adopt later on in life. Perhaps people see LinkedIn more as a way to move careers or to find new clients and generate new revenue streams into their own work or organisation. So if you get ahead now while you're still studying at university, that means you've got a head start on your competition ultimately. So again, talk to your careers service or talk to EY or other employers about what you want to see from students on LinkedIn and, and really understand why we use LinkedIn to access students and learn more about them. There's a really nice part that you can put on your profile where you can ask for recommendations or endorsements from people who've interacted with you. So ask a tutor or a lecturer if they wouldn't mind putting something on there or perhaps a teammate from one of your projects or um, an organisation you volunteer with. That can be a real differentiator for us when we're deciding who to interview, for example. Finally, a word of warning. It can be more damaging to have a profile that you don't update than it is to not have one at all. So if you have a profile that's out of date or it's very stagnant and stale, what does that say to us as a brand? It doesn't show that you're very engaged or perhaps um, proactive. So I would either commit to it or don't commit to it at all. So committing to it, it doesn't have to be a big investment. It can be just going on there once a week and doing a couple of bits and bobs. It doesn't have to be a massive time commitment from you, but just keep it as fresh and up to date as possible.